Good evening, Devils. This is Sweat, and I'm just getting in from a pretty exhausting reconnaissance mission for you guys. So before we jump right into it, let me just let me tell you that I broke this down as, as easily as I could. So if any point in time you get uh, bored with one particular section of the map or you want to jump ahead and see what another map has to offer, simply click that map on the bottom blue bar. It'll take you right there in the video. This is going to be my actual gameplay combined with theater mode that I captured this morning as soon as it was available and it's just strictly to give you a heads up of the hostile combat environment that you're about to jump into so that being said let's jump right into it this is Zoo and a lot of this is based off of what you guys know from the Treyarch release alright so it's located inside Communist Soviet Union and the layout initially reminds me of Circus Map from Modern Warfare 2 now there are very few wide open areas but it does have several buildings, ins and outs for close range combat and it has the monorail that runs around a large section of the map. Now while I was equipped with an assault rifle for a majority of this reconnaissance mission, I would strongly suggest a submachine gun for this map. Uh, using that submachine gun with rapid fire or suppressor with scavenger or flag jacket, either Warlord Pro or Sleight of Hand, and Tacmas Pro will allow you to spam the enemy with concussion grenades and flashbangs, and you can quickly move around and flank them while they're stunned. All right? And while I initially thought that it would be a foolish vantage point to sit up here on top of this monorail. I quickly, quickly learned that it's it's very important and it's very useful, especially when you control the A spawn. It allows you to look down on the B spawn uh, almost right out of the gate. As you can see here, as you go to the right, you can see the enemies that are going to be right there on that B spawn. And it allows you a direct path to cut off the enemy that are trying to reinforce B from C. So it makes them go around longer. So B is to your right here, there's C directly in front of you. It makes them go all the way around because they can't come directly underneath you. While you're holding that monorail, assault rifles and light machine guns can be very, very effective there. All right, so let's go over to combat loadout one more time. First and foremost, submachine gun or a fully automatic uh, assault rifle if you're taking the objectives, if you're playing on the ground. Uh, close quarters combat does not bode well on this map for the bulky light machine guns or the long range capabilities of the sniper rifle if you're down there. All right. Secondary is your preference, but I prefer the law, in this case the RPG. Um, flag jacket is a must, especially jumping on the objectives. Scavenger and hardline with spy planes and counter spy planes work really well when exploring new, new combat zones. All right, so let's jump right into stockpile. And it reminds me of a cross maybe between Berlin Wall and Discovery. But it also has a Call of Duty World at War feel to it, especially from the outside. And initially, it seems like it'd be a very versatile map. You can see the, the close combat. You can see the open lines of sight. However, once you jump in the game, you quickly realize this is an ambush from Call of Duty 4. It's certainly not Wasteland from Modern Warfare 2. All, well, it, very quickly, yeah. <laughs> All the fighting takes place inside this one building, all right? And based on how you play, say, a grid or WMD on Black Ops will determine how well you'll do playing this map stockpile. Uh, it's, very get, it's very easy to get caught up running inside this building over and over. So don't lose sight of the objective, uh, whatever the objective-based game might be. That being said, you, you can be successful with a lot of different combat loadouts, okay? You can be successful with sniper rifles, there's long lines of sight outside. You can be successful with assault rifles for defensive positions and, and the, the supporting fire that it, it allows. And you can definitely be successful with the submachine guns inside this. Now many of you devils would like the fast paced action inside the building itself. There's never a dull moment. Uh, the enemy is constantly fighting with you tooth and nail uh, to get you out of here. Uh, but it's very, very similar to Nuketown in that regard. Uh, and that's... Uh, where my feeling of, say, contempt for this map is the only feeling I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to get across to you, uh, mainly because of the inability to prevent the enemy from just cowering corners in fear and shooting you in the back, hiding with Ghost Pro. Um, consider yourselves warned, cause, warned because it can get quite frustrating, to be honest. So let's go over some machine guns, rapid fire suppressors, again, most useful around the interior buildings. Claymores and jammers are very important whenever the enemy is in here slow down their progress and at the same time you disable the, the defenses uh, you know their claymores and their explosives as well that being said motion sensors would be very very useful whenever you're just getting used to this map you're not used to the corners on the inside you're not used to where the enemy can hide motion sensors would definitely be very beneficial 
so let's go straight to hotel. This reminds me of Stadium from the First Strike DLC pack. The pool area seems a great deal like the middle statue of Stadium. The upper floors provide a vantage point. Uh, I strongly suggest finding an alternate route to the elevators that you saw in the trailers. Uh, the pool houses offer a great vantage point in addition to the open balconies on each side of the building. And it appears to me uh, initially this map offers one of the easiest spawn traps as long as you maintain the high ground. If you play in a full party, lock down the pool house and the stairwells on either side. You can trap the enemy in one building or the other, uh, much like high rise in Modern Warfare 2. Marksmen with, with sniper rifles can prevent enemies that are stupid enough to stick their head in those balconies that you see up top there. Combat loadout for hotel mainly consists of automatic assault rifles or submachine guns while you're clearing the buildings. But once you control those high lines of sight, you can use the M16s, the G11s. I mean, those will be devastating as you fire down on enemies in that open pool area. Sniper rifles from those vantage points, also deadly weapons. Uh, you want to strongly, again, consider using counter spy planes and blackbirds on these new maps, in addition to spy planes and SAM turrets, because you have to deter the enemy. The enemy is not going to have the map knowledge just like you. So if you really want to put the enemy at a disadvantage on all these maps, your kill streaks. Think small. Don't handicap yourself by setting up a kill streak, an 11 kill streak, when you don't know your escape routes, when you don't know the map knowledge, the map layout that allows you to get out of a bad situation uh, once you get into some some heavy firefight. So it's certainly something that you have to keep in mind that you have to consider is using low kill streaks. And another point I want to make while you're jumping into these map packs. You want to jump right into multiplayer combat and you want to be competitive. You don't want to be you don't want to hold up your team and you don't want to be the guy at the bottom end. So in order to do that, you're not going to get automatically have more map knowledge just by watching a few videos than what the enemy does cuz you don't know how many how much the enemy has already played these maps. You don't know how many videos the, the enemy's watched on these maps. All right? What you have to do is you have to pay attention on the top left corner to your mini map. You have to pay attention to that UAV. You have to pay attention to where those green arrows are, where those green arrows are facing. You have to pay attention to where those red dots are, where there's voids in the map. Even if there's a UAV up and the entire enemy team is running ghost, you have to know based on where your green arrows are pointing and where they are in relation to the map, you have to be able to figure out where the enemy forces are. All right, and another thing, TACMAS Pro, I can't stress it enough. When you're running around jumping from objective to objective, you have TACMAS Pro. It's so easy to withstand all those, those concussion grenades and to jump right up, jump right into combat and surprise your enemy who thinks they have you off guard. All right, so let's go and let's take it right to Convoy. And this map hits home, Devils, and quite literally... It simulates an actual attack on the United States as if the Soviets had invaded and occupied our own soil. The interstate section of the map is something that we can all relate to seeing every day. And it should serve as a reminder to every one of us that thankfully we have men and women that are courageous enough for fight for our freedom overseas that prevent the enemy from taking over our very lives and our very livelihood. Uh, this map offers the longest lines of sight of any of the new map packs. And for that reason, that reason alone, I strongly suggest... Uh, that you try out your marksmanship skills with the sniper rifles on this map. And uh, and you can really reach out and touch your enemies. The higher you are in elevation, the more of an advantage you have. Uh, but remember, just don't silhouette yourself against the sky. Or you'll end up providing the enemy with a pretty easy target. Uh, when sniping since the new patch, I would strongly recommend you try out the L96 with either no attachment or the variable zoom lens. Or the PSG-1 with no attachment or the variable zoom lens. Again... Those continue to be the most consistent one-shot, one-kill weapons with me and my sniping experiences thus far on Black Ops, which are kind of frustrating and pretty well documented as how frustrating they can be at times. Uh, as good as this map is for sniping, it's a map that you can certainly control with assault rifles of any type. Long lines of sight, uh, there are many different forms of cover uh, between roadblocks, overturned vehicles, broken concrete... Uh, covering fire from behind bits and pieces of cover like that can be deadly against enemy exposed on that highway. And there are certainly uh, sections of the map uh, suitable for submachine gun fire around the edges. And assault rifles, though, they just continue to be uh, what provides the most versatility 
and are the most recommended loadout for you devils who haven't broken out your marksmanship skills with the sniper rifle yet. All right, Devils, that's all the information I can offer you at the moment, but it's not going to be my last recon mission, and I'm certainly not going to stop anytime soon. This is just my initial review of these hostile combat zones, uh, so I hope it's enough to allow you to jump right in and be competitive in the online community. I want to remind you again, kill streaks are very important to your success. Do not handicap yourself by equipping high streaks without map knowledge to consistently obtain them. Spy planes, counter spy planes, SAM turrets, blackbirds should be your number one priority. These will allow you to be the most competitive. Remember, you guys, if you could subscribe if you have just visiting in, uh, please like and favorite the video. I put a lot of work and effort into this this morning. And there's a direct link to the Respawn Army in the description if you guys could go bump this video uh, for a chance for me to be on Machinima Respawn. I greatly appreciate it, Devils. I hope you have a chance uh, to get back and uh, to jump right in and be competitive. Until then, good luck and good hunting.